I got a little time today to uh, work on the 5x8 teardrop for my wife and I. I'm busy doing everybody else's stuff. So today what I'm going to do is get these really nice hinges. You probably saw them in the, in the uh, unboxing. You see what they've got little nylon bushings. And they don't. There really isn't any play to speak of. And they come with screws. No, wait a minute, they don't come with screws. That was one of my graphs. They didn't come with screws. I guess they don't know how thick a material you're going to use. So you can see, for, I put on my little lip edge here. Um, and I uh, coated, that's 2.7 millimeter in between the outside, you know, the wall here. And then this piece, I put in another piece of 2.7 millimeter to move it back a little bit. So when the door shuts, so the hinges are on this side. So when the door shuts, it doesn't pinch up right here because there's, you know, they're just not enough space. You need to have space for your gaskets. And people will tell you a crushed gasket is not going to do you much good. Um, so what you need is your gasket is supposed to be squeezed a little bit. Make sure you have that space so it can be squeezed a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set these door hinges temporarily. Um, Here's my door. You see, I set the window last time around. That's my interior look right there. I'm going to lean it a little bit so you can, I don't know which way is going to be the best view for you. But I chose this. I actually went through the whole stack and chose this because of those little, those kind of knots. And it's super cool. And then I couldn't decide if I wanted to use, which one I wanted to use on the inside or the outside. I thought, you know what? I'm not going to paint this one. There's some imperfections on the outside, like that right there, where there was a warp in the wood. I sanded it, and it went through the veneer. But I just throw another coat of, of uh, epoxy over this, and it'll be fine. So let's set this door in here. And I need to put my spacer in there and raise it up. So I'll raise it up with the spacer. That lines up pretty close. So, what I can do, I can move y'all a little closer so you don't kind of get the old cold shoulder or open shoulder look. Just kind of pull it back in. I don't mean to do that, but I still knew at YouTube, so I make mistakes. I make a lot of them, and I don't edit them out. So you can see where my mistakes are. So these are actually, these are actually, oh, let me see if I can get up. Ah, I can't get up, I'm old and fat. Oh, actually, I lost a bunch of weight. These are panhead screws. Stainless steel, three quarters of an inch, number eight. This is not what I'm going to use permanently. Uh, can I get a much bigger screw like this? I was worried about, you know, uh, security screws, and I thought, you know what, really? Nobody's going to break into that. If they want to break into something, they go down, down here to that guy who's sleeping in a tent and just unzip his thing. So, uh, I'm using these smaller ones right now because what I want to do is I'm just going to use them to set this so I can work on the door handles. I don't have a lot of time to, uh, to completely get back on this. I like to just, just, just get right into this one and go at it full speed get it finished because we've got a camping trip coming up uh, but my wife wants to do it in a t sleep in a camp in a tent she likes camping in a tent and I say it's okay as long as we have a large group pretty much everybody in our group is packing some of them are police officers so we're safe uh, we're going to go to Moraza's Bend full of freaking alligators. Some people go, oh, let's go see the alligators. I say, let's go see them at Razoos and eat some. I don't really want to go see the alligators. These are great hinges. If I had some of that tea molding to go around here, whew. but I don't. I'm not willing to pay for it. I'm going to try to make I've tried to do this in all handmade as much as possible. I like the store-bought doors, I do, but 
I started doing, I started with this one before I thought about a store-bought door. And I, I, I like the store-bought doors, but, man, get something bigger than the 26 by 32. I'm telling you, if, if you got hair on your head, you're going to knock it off. You're going to knock it off. I got a bump on my head from going in and out of the 26 by 32 factory made door. But the door is really nice though. Really nice. There it is. There we go. And these number eight pan head screws are just about the right size in the head to where these are, this is kind of like a little beveled hole here. And my other screws are the proper screws going here. But this will sit right in the middle so it'll hold it like I want it to be held. While I'm tinkering with it, I'm trying to get my uh, door hardware to work. Well, I mean it works. I'm trying to get it figured out where I can make it function properly. See, that's a nice tight fit right there for that. Don't tighten these up too tight, just snug them when you're doing this. Uh, I probably, I may, I am not sure, I may buy me some all the way through bolts because when I started this I thought that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to put bolts going all the way through. And then put some nylon nuts on the inside so that you know, somebody want to come take my door off for some reason, they couldn't, couldn't get it loose. The only time I'm worried about security is when we're away from the, you know, away from the camper fishing because somebody can watch you leave. And then maybe have a look out while you're out on the water, rifle through your stuff. But I've, I've never had that happen. When we used to go on our, our other campers, they had a 21 foot and a 20 and a half foot. I left the door open. Never had an issue. The least thing I was worried about is the dog going, oh look, a friendly camper go in there and sniff around and just before he decides to leave, there's nobody there to feed him, pee on the seats or something. So, yeah, I, I haven't had any problems. That's why I think that I'll, when I do this one permanently, um, I will probably just put screws in the doors. Oh, yeah, that would. We got tinted windows so they can't see us. So if you leave your camper in the summertime, you're gonna have the uh, you're gonna have the uh, air conditioner running. So when you've got tinted windows with a little curtain, can't see in, they're not going to mess with that. I think security is not a really big deal in the campground. Besides that, you shouldn't be taking jewelry and stuff like that. The only thing we take a value with us is our, our EDCs. We don't go anywhere without them. There we go. Let's see. I got my little... Chip is in there kind of tight. Ooh, look at that, that's for my branding iron. Is that focusing? Nah. Here we go. Sitting up for a while, so I gotta go. Ta -da. I'll take a sander and uh, oh, I see it right there. That may not be bad right now. Kind of hold it in place while I get everything screwed together. Now I can go back and fill in right around these edges with the. I'm not sure if I use silicone or not because silicone seems to get mold, get moldy on it. Maybe I'll use a 
tub and tile caulk, a white, gloss white. That stuff doesn't mold up very easily. And it seals and it's already got a bright white finish on it. So it might look good. Bright white edge around there. My last and my first camper I made for us, like I told you guys in one of the other videos, I tinted the windows, and then when you use something like a flat spatula and you're trying to, trying to cut those edges, and there was just this ever so small of a sliver of clear glass around here, and when you that sun come up in the morning, it looked like a freaking solar eclipse. It was, whoo, it was, well, it was awful. So the first time I got the glass tinted. So that's, uh, we just set the hinges. I'm going to shut the camera off and then uh, turn it around and get my uh, door hardware and see if we can't make that stuff do it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.